Hi, my name is Eric Wasatonic, and I am the Electrical Lab Supervisor at Penn State Harrisburg. And part of my job here is to um, assemble apparatus for the faculty who, um, you know, they need stuff made for a demonstration for one of their classes or for their research experiments. And so I'm going to show you a project I'm working on right now. The electromagnetics teacher is doing some research in, um, in the effects of RF energy radiated on fluids, much like you would see in the, um, in the tests of how cell phones affect human flesh. And so basically he wants me to build um, a clear plastic box that he's going to have water flowing in one way and then come out the other way through these nylon hose attachments and um, then he's going to have some antenna up here radiating down that direction and so I'm just going to show how I make this thing. I've already gotten started on it and I made a form out of um, particle board got one inch wide here and about eight inches end to end and uh, and the requisite two and a half inches wide this way so and I'm going to use this to um, to soften up some I'm going to soften up some plexiglass and and so it'll adhere to the form and uh, get it you know get this nice tapered edge here uh, the reason it's tapered in the first place is just so uh, the water so that the the fluid flow um, is fairly uniform within the central box where he's uh, radiating the RF energy. And here's the pattern for the narrow edge. I'm going to cut it out on one quarter inch plexiglass. I'm going to make two pieces of this and then two pieces of plexi of uh, th three thirty second inch thick plexiglass is going to go on the wide faces. All right, I got the, the plastic cut out, got it on the form and held down with rubber bands to uh, pull down the ends after I heat them up with the heat gun. The plastic's all cooled off. Let's pull off these rubber bands and see how it looks. Look at that. Holds its shape pretty well. Now I just got to do the other one. Almost done with the forming. Got one more piece. Okay, now we start to get interesting. We got to join these pieces together. Now I could use um, I could use hot glue or I could use plexiglass epoxy. You know I have both of those, but I would have to act very fast in either case, and um, and the joint that results might not be very strong. These joints have to be very very strong. Um, you know just just as strong as the plexiglass itself because. Uh, when water is flowing in through here, it's going to be at pressure and it has to withstand the pressure. You know, it won't be really high pressure, but it'll be pressure enough that if there's any leaks, it's going to easily squirt out the uh, the sides of the easily squirt out the joints. And also, I can't use acrylic glue either because in that case, um, the surfaces would have to be very smooth, very clean, very flush and this is just a really shoddy job here you know nothing super 
precise. So the way I'll be doing this is to use cheap soldering iron. I'm going to melt the plastic all around the edges here to join the pieces together and then maybe I'll finish off with the heat gun too. Um, get a nice, you know, just to fill up any little any little gaps that there might be for any holes for leaking, I can fill them up um, after I get it thoroughly welded together with the soldering iron. Okay, here we go. This is a method I used many years, I started using many years ago um, because I just couldn't, you know, for joining different types of plastic together, I just couldn't find any glue that was strong enough to to hold the pieces together for a long period of time, so I just welded them together with cheap soldering iron. And we'll see how it goes now. I haven't done this in a few years, but it's real easy. Just got to go all the way down, melting the plastic all the way through, trying to join the pieces together as best I can. Okay, so there it is. It's all welded together. I would be here all night if I hadn't switched over to this very nice Unger 47 and a half watt soldering iron. It's got the the heating element is detachable like this, just a regular small light socket screw base there. And of course, this is detachable too. And uh this is just a big copper bar. Um, this is actually designed for for soldering and desoldering um, ICs in, in dip package and also um, any kind of wire or cable that just happens to have a whole bunch of pins in a row. You can easily take out very many pins all at the same time. It's got these round bowl shaped attachments too. You can see this is actually designed for um, old ICs in the in the metal can package here um, so you know you can very easily unsolder all the pins at once and uh, there's even larger one here this would be for vacuum tube socket um, if, if you had one if you had the type of vacuum tube socket that goes into a breadboard then this would be it there we go now it's focused you can see this one's never even been used probably 50 60 years old I really doubt they still make these anymore now it's time to put the nylon hose uh, adapters in here and in this case I am going to use some hot glue just to get it um, initially held in place and then I'm going to melt the plastic all around again with the soldering iron Alright, there we go. Guess I'll do a once over with the heat gun just to uh, reflow all the joints and it'll be finished. And one thing about melting plastic with the soldering iron, the only way to clean it is to use a dry paper towel, very thick dry paper towel, 
so your fingers are <clears throat> thermally insulated. You can't use a wet sponge like you can when you're melting solder with the soldering iron. And even then, of course, there's still going to be a little bit of plastic residue. You, you can always get that off with a wire brush or a crimped wire wheel. On second thought, I'm going to stop right there. Um, let's see, you can see on this side that I didn't do with the heat gun, it's relatively flat from here all the way to here. But over on this side, you can see there's a little bit of a dip in here. It's just melting the plastic so much. I mean, I can't even touch it. It's so hot. The plastic is just falling down. It's, it's warping all out of shape. and. Uh, it's important that I stop so that this stays as flat as possible. So I don't know if there's any leaks, you know, I can always do do some touch up with the soldering iron, but I guess um guess I'll fill it up with water now, see how it looks. Well, there it is, all filled with water. Got it taped up with duct tape on either end to hold it in, and I did find one tiny little leak right here I marked it off with blue marker um, very slow leak so I'm gonna drain the water and fix that up a little bit with the soldering iron again and um, more leaks may crop up once this thing gets hooked up to the the water pump that the teacher is using and uh, but uh, this will be one less leak to worry about and of course I can fix any other leaks um, I was expecting a few leaks anyway. Um, if anybody has experience making very simple home brew um, in your basement, in your garage kind of tools, methods, um, making watertight plexiglass containers, please let me know. Let me know if you have any better ideas as to how I could have or should have put this thing together. Thanks for watching.